How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about The Brides of Dracula. This is from 1960, directed by Terrence Fisher, and distributed in the U.S. by Universal, uh, hence why it's on the Hammer Horror Series 8 film collection. Uh, the ones distributed by Universal were kind of hit and miss as far as easiness to find on DVD. I did find The Phantom of the Opera before I picked up this pack, but a lot of the other films were super hard to find outside of this. Uh, actually, Brides of Dracula outside of this was pretty hard to find. Um, so I'd recommend picking this set up. It's eight films. Brides of Dracula, Curse of the Werewolf, Evil of Frankenstein, The Phantom of the Opera. So four of your classic monsters, as well as another vampire movie, Kiss of the Vampire, not to be confused with Vampire's Kiss, which is a different movie with Nicolas Cage. Um, you also got Paranoiac, Nightmare, and Night Creatures. Night Creatures, I actually reviewed on this channel already, and I really, really want to review all eight of these. So I'd recommend picking this pack up. There's a Blu-ray version, although I haven't seen it in physical stores, just Amazon. But definitely check it out. Eight great movies on there. Um, Universal, yeah, um, pretty, pretty cool. Um, so Brides of Dracula, this is from 1960, directed once again by Terrence Fisher, who directed the previous film as well as a lot of Hammer's classics. Uh, in this one, you get a young woman, Marianne Danielle, played by actress Yvonne Monlar. I hope I pronounced her name right. Um, so, Marianne is traveling through the English countryside. She is going to an all-girls school where she is going to teach French. Uh, she's a French woman. And on her way there, she stops at a village. A mysterious stranger pays her cab driver to just leave, and now she's stranded there. And all the villagers are like, we can get you out of town before nightfall. It's okay, we can get you out. And she's like, it's fine, I'll just stop here. And before they can argue too much further, a mysterious baroness enters, and the baroness says, if you need a place to stay, stay with me in my castle where I live alone. I need company. However, when she gets there, she finds that the baroness doesn't actually live alone. Her son is there as well, confined to his own wing of the castle. Now, the baroness and her son have very different takes on what's going on there, and she doesn't know who to trust. But before the situation can spiral too much further out of control, someone shows up to help her. Peter Cushing's Van Helsing shows up again, and it's really great to see him. Um, now, I don't spoil movies really bad when I review them, but I do have to say one thing about Horror of Dracula really quick, the first one. And it's something I guarantee you, you already know, but I do have to put a spoiler on it. Um, anyway, three, two, one. Dracula, at the end of Horror of Dracula, died. I know you probably already knew that, but for the one guy who was going to get upset. Um, so Van Helsing is roaming around looking for more vampires. You got the sense in the previous movie that his organization was bigger and it wasn't just hunting Dracula, but in this one, seeing him hunt for vampires other than Dracula really gives you a sense of how big his quest is. He doesn't just want Dracula, it's not a personal vendetta, he wants to hunt as many vampires as he can. So he shows up and helps. And you get the rest of the movie, and it's fun. It's a little campier than the previous movie, and this one you don't have Christopher Lee in it. Christopher Lee, as well as the Dracula character, is absent in this movie. Uh, the only other one in the Hammer Dracula series where Lee isn't in there is Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Um, but in that one, uh, the character was there. They recast it. Um, but this one, no Dracula, no Lee. 
uh, and you do miss him. You still have Peter Cushing in this one, though, so you get one of the two big hammer stars there. And, you know, like the climatic fight, you know, at the end, it gets a, a, few, a little cheesy in spots, but I don't mind, it was fun. Um, however, I have to say, the one big flaw with this movie is the title. Um, Brides of Dracula is really an, an inaccurate title. Uh, while most of the vampires are female in this movie, uh, one very important vampire is male, but most of them are female, but they're not Dracula's brides. Going into this, I was expecting, like, the dismantled ruins of Dracula's family, his brides left alone to roam the countryside and fend for themselves, and that's not what you get. Uh, with this movie, um, you get uh, female vampires, most of whom were created after Dracula had died, never even knew him. But Brides of Dracula keeps the brand name and the title, and I guess I get that. Uh, the other thing is, um, the rules. Uh, in the first Horror of Dracula, the idea was when you got bit, you would become an addict to the vampire, and even though you didn't want to, you would do whatever he said, and then when you died, you'd get bit enough, and you'd die of blood loss, and after you died, you'd turn into a vampire. In this one, people get bit once, they die, and then they're vampires. Now, there's two things that could explain this other than just a continuity error. One is maybe these vampires were so bloodthirsty and hungry that they drink all the blood and you die of blood loss on the first night. Maybe Dracula was spacing it out a little more and these vampires are just more gluttonous, you know, and you drink blood till you die of blood loss in one night. Maybe. Or the other explanation, if we look at the other Hammer film, Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter, in that film they're stated that there are several different species of vampires, and, you know, maybe these vampires aren't really related to Dracula too much at all. Maybe they're completely different species and that's how their rules are. I mean, this isn't the character of Dracula returning. So maybe it's that. Um... Captain Cronus, by the way, is a, a good Hammer film, and I'll have a review for it coming out very soon if I haven't posted it already. Um, I did shoot a review for it, so keep an eye out for that very soon if it's not out already. Um, so that the rule thing kind of bugged me. Um, but other than that, though, I really did like this film. I was expecting it. Oh, this is the one without Lee. And the first one, I was like, okay, this is going to be the... A real problem here is you're gonna want to uh, not watch it or something but then I watched it and I was like this is actually fun you know you feel Lee's absence but at the same time it's a fun vampire story you still get Cushing as Van Helsing and I'd recommend it I'm gonna go and watch all of these I think there's nine of them and I'll have reviews for the rest coming out very soon up next is Dracula, Prince of Darkness in this series, um, so look out for the Dracula, Prince of Darkness review coming out sometime soon. Um, I also want to cover more Hammer, more Universal, 80s stuff, slashers. That's the kind of thing that I usually have here, so if you're a fan of any of those things, a horror geek in general, uh, I will have more reviews out very soon. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.